Hey, and welcome back to Wheat Beat. My name is Mike, and I am embarking right now on a new series of sourdough. I'm going to just call it Sourdough Academy. We are going to talk about sourdough in depth. Now, I just came back from a fantastic course at the San Francisco Baking Institute. It's just another week I spent over there with a guy named Tomas Tefri Chamberlain, who wrote this book here on Panettone and Viennoiserie. He is a world-renowned expert on the science of sourdough. He has a degree in microbiology. And since I have a degree and a background in science as well, I am particularly interested in anything to do with the science of baking. And this was the best course I could have possibly taken for that. Because what ca I came out with is a lot, a lot, a lot more knowledge about the science of sourdough. And it turns out it's a lot more complicated than just what was your temperature and how much hydration did you have in your dough. There is a factor of uh, oxygenation, uh, different enzymes, phytase, protease, amylase. How do they affect things? And most importantly, how does pH affect those enzymes, which ultimately affects your dough? So that's why I have this pH meter that I got with a special tip that's for soft food so that you can put it in your dough and throughout the whole process check and see what your pH is at. Based on your pH, you will also know when is the right time to put it in the oven. When are you, should you be shaping it? When should you be dividing it? It turns out that if you uh, pick a certain point where your pH is at, you will get a more optimal uh, result. As an example, if I start at a higher pH, I'm going to get more amylase activity. Amylase is an enzyme that creates a simple sugar out of the starches in the, in the flour. And as the pH goes down, we get less activity of amylase and we get more activity of protease. Protease is the enzyme that breaks down the gluten and makes your dough more extensible or easier to stretch. There's a lot of relationships between the enzymes, the pH, obviously the temperature and the time, the hydration level, oxygenation level, how much oxygen you introduce into your dough. It sounds complicated and it kind of is, which is what I think is fun about it. It takes things to the next level and I am super excited to embark on this journey together with you to see how we can apply some of this knowledge into real world baking and make meaningful changes to your breads. A lot of people ask me, hey, I did this sourdough, I, it turned out really okay, and then I did it again the following week, did exactly the same thing, and it came out completely different. What happened? And those kinds of questions are hard to answer without knowing all of the different factors that are involved with making bread, especially sourdough. So I'll keep it short for today. Join me next time as we start talking about uh, some of the science behind sourdough and hopefully get you to a place where you have a much, much better understanding of the process that goes on behind the scenes.